All right. Part three, we're going to start taking a look at question 33. In question 33, we're really ultimately asked to apply exponential functions. Luckily, this is one where we don't have to make one. We're asked to interpret it. But this was an area that some people lost um, a silly point or two last year just because of their phrasing. So what does 20 mean in this example? In any exponential function, this value out here, we usually use the keyword initial or starting amount. So the initial population of rabbits would be um, a good phrasing to use there. And when you say 1.014, what does that represent? A 1.4% rate of growth in the population per day. Um, you want to be careful there. You don't want to just say something generic like it's how much the rabbits are growing by. You know, you're indicating it's growing, but you're not really saying what. So the best thing to do just to avoid any controversy, just actual, actually say what the percentage is. This way the person looking over your paper, scoring your paper, knows that you actually know what's going on there. If you just say the word, oh, it's the rate, that's kind of generic. It doesn't even really show that you know the difference between linear and exponential. For the bottom, average rate of change, a rock, is same as slope. So the first thing we have to do here, if we're looking at day 50 and day 100, actually find the output values. So I typed in P of X into my calculator. Um, either Y equals, or you could just type it in in kind of the generic home screen, replace an X with 50, replace the X with 100. This, is, this should be what you get. Obviously, slope we know is our delta Y over delta X. I know my change in X right away. That they gave me, the change there is obviously 50. The change in the values I just found is 40.24. They wanted it to the nearest 10, so be careful here. Average rate of change, 0 0.8 rabbits per day. Question 34. <clears throat> Our parking garage question. We had garage A and garage B. This is what I classify as an adjustment question specifically with garage A. The garage B rule was pretty easy here. Hey, if a company charges uh, $3.25 per hour, you would obviously write that as 3.25x. Another common mistake that people make with this one and questions like this, they just write expressions. They get so hung up on the rule, they forget about the equation. You also are writing two rules here, so see how I organize it. I even You don't have to you do this, but I said, hey, this is A of X, and this is B of X. If I just write kind of like Y equals and Y equals, someone might not be able to tell which one's which. So make it clear which one. Uh, they don't tell us a function name, so I could use anything I want. But make it clear, identify which equation is which. So let's look at garage A. Garage A's deal was $7 to park for two hours. Not for each hour, but like, hey, for two hours, it's only 7 bucks, And then every hour after that costs $3. So why the X minus 2 here, you might be saying? This is why it's an adjustment. I wouldn't want to say 3X. Let's think about this. Let's choose a value. Let's say I was there for five hours. If I write 3X there, that means I got charged $3 for all five hours which doesn't make sense because this was kind of like, hey, you went over the two hours, now you have to start paying $3. So the X minus two represents the fact that you already paid for two hours right here. And you're taking away two from whatever the total amount of parking time was. So if you're there for five hours, you should really only be charged three hours of an additional fee. That's where the adjustment comes in. Now obviously you could distribute and clean this up if you'd like, but this is perfectly acceptable. Now, when would these be the same price? Um, ultimately, we're setting these equal to each other. It says algebraically. I don't want to just type them in and see where they intersect. So I set them equal to each other. I subtract 3x uh, from both sides to get 0.25x. And then I could do this without a calculator. I could rid 0.25 by multiplying it by 4. And 1 times 4, I get, hey, after 4 hours... Both garages would have the same value. Anything after that or before that, they're going to be different. Four-point question. You're basically looking at 
Um, depending how you did it, it's not always like this. Two points up top, two points on the bottom. Obviously, a lot of room for a minus one here, you know, a three point just because you forgot to label or clearly separate which one's which. Um, maybe you didn't show algebra here, you didn't show your work, so you got a three out of four. So, not the hardest question, but one where some people might lose some, once again, silly points.